Mustard Knuckle. Hello everybody, Mustard Knuckle back again, heading out in the whirlwind. See what we can get into with this thing. It's got uh, four 20 millimeter cannons. It's awesome, a lot of fun to use. Uh, we will talk gameplay, history of the Whirlwind, and any tips that come up along the way. We do this three to five times a week. We do a, uh, every Tuesday we do a three minute clinic, which is three minutes on how to destroy a different vehicle. Get it done quick, three minutes, move on, go out there and try it in the game. So if you're interested in that as well, subscribe. Appreciate it very much. So let's see what we can find here. This Whirlwind is an amazing vehicle, and it's pretty cool the way it was, um, discovered or made or you know, kind of the way everything played out with the development of this uh, gun carrier whatever you want to call it there we go let's get a side shot side shots a home run on this thing especially once you get the upgraded ammo that's not all the um, anti-air stuff these more uh, whatever that you want to call them these solid shells or whatever um, I guess the uh, armor piercing type stuff but Anyway, uh, let's see. So the Whirlwind, let's see if I can get a shot on this guy. Nope. Uh, you know, it's funny, right as I started shooting at him, I had a feeling that I probably shouldn't be doing that. And that's kind of one of the problems with this Whirlwind is this, this turret sticks way up. Um, and it's easy to take a shot in there. It just, it happens. So gotta keep that in mind when you're using this. Now, the Whirlwind, this thing kind of started in the early 40s. Uh, it's got the Flak 38 cannon on it, which is four 20 millimeter uh, cannons, and they fire fast. And this thing was effective. The, uh, the Flak 38 cannon, they built 3,700-ish uh, of those. Uh, overall, a lot of them were carried on trailers or whatever, and the gun itself weighed like 3,000 something pounds. You see a picture of it, and it's like, how in the world can that weigh almost 4,000 pounds or just over 3,000 pounds? But it does. It's crazy. All right, let's see if I can use all my ammo here before anything happens. I'm doing pretty well so far. There we go. I'm almost out. This is pointless. That was dumb. Here's my last eight rounds, and that's it. Okay, so now I'm going to fly around for 20 minutes. Um, maybe I can frighten this guy. Here we go. I'm going to scare him. Here we go. No. Not really. Whoa, here comes somebody for me. Hey, I got my tail shot off. Things are going well. All right. Ugh, okay, well. I don't even know what this plane is. It's... Is that French? Italian? I, said it's, I think it's Italian. And then maybe those guns are good, and that's why it only carries a few rounds. Maybe? I don't know. Anyway, so they started making this thing, and I'm going to jump in the plane again. Okay, sorry guys. We'll get on with this in a second. Let me get in this plane and see what I can do here, if anything. Alright. Not this guy. What's he? Oh, that's the other guy's plane. Alright. That was the guy that was chasing me. Alright. So let's get in here, and hit something. You're doing pretty good at holding them back. This is a cool thing when you're in an airplane. Try to remember. I mean, I forget, but try to remember. Kind of take notes on where everybody is so you can get an advantage when you get back into your tank. Especially when you come over the top like this. So you can see the whole battlefield and you can get an idea where everybody is. And, you know, maybe you see somebody creeping up on you. Maybe you see a way that you can get around behind guys. Maybe, you know, you might. You never know what you might see. So just try to try to remember to to think about that I try to put I just try to put hits on anybody I can even if I know I can't pen um, I'll at least try to put hits on them or put shots in their area and then my team can see you know there's something why is he shooting over there there must be somebody over there maybe that'll help I don't know so back to the verbal win so the black 38 had four 20 millimeter cannons in one assembly they built it was pretty well, not super common, but it was there were almost 4,000 of them built. Um, it had a range on the ground of like 15,000 feet or so. Um, and it, for shooting laterally, like we're shooting now, it had a pretty good range. And then when you're shooting up at airplanes, 
It had, uh, it could shoot about 6,500 feet or so like that, something like that. So a little bit more than a nautical mile. Ah, jeez, driver now. I mean, I'm not gonna make it very far with this. Uh, it is fun, I'm telling you guys, it's fun to shoot this and just shoot and shoot and shoot. The reload, I wish it was a little bit faster, but it's not too bad. I, a lot of times I end up reloading at like the worst times to be trying to reload. Um, man, lots of crits, probably lots of assists. There's one. Come on. Oh, there's another guy coming across. Man, I mean, you can, it's cool to watch where it hits. It just peppers these guys up. I really like to get rid of this T-34. All right, so uh, come on. So they only ended up building about a hundred of these, somewhere between eighty-seven, I think, and hundred and five. Nobody can be too sure because they use the old Panzer chassis. It's a ch Panzer IV chassis um, that they used for these. So if one of those got damaged or the turret got damaged, they pull the old turret off and put this turret on. And the interesting thing is that. When the military realized that they needed this, oh boy! When the military realized that they needed this, they um, started development on it. Right. Well, meanwhile, there's a guy out in the field, you know, with a unit, a, a tank unit, I guess. And he, what's going on with that guy in the back? All right, cool. Now let's get this guy. Um, Will we get him? Come on. Um, so he had a damaged Panzer, and he told his guys, hey, take that Panzer over there, and take that Black 38 that we got on the trailer over there, and slap that thing on top of it, and they did it, and it worked. Because what they needed, they needed an anti-air, like close-in anti-air support, because they were losing the air battle, right? Oh, there you go. And that, that's exactly it right there. That thing, this thing is, it shoots so straight at short range that you, it's very easy to have success against airplanes. And then with its little bit of armor, it's not just wide open like a lot of these other anti-aircraft ones are. Where it's just something on a trailer or on a flatbed. This thing's got some armor so you can actually shoot it, guys. Especially when they don't come from the top. If they're coming pretty flat, you got a good chance to be able to get them before they get you. So that's kind of an upside of this thing. So, back to the story. I'll try to get this guy. Jeez. Busy round. So, um, yeah, he's got me beat there. Alright, I'm just gonna come around the other side. The, so the guy in the field told those guys to put that thing on there. Well, he didn't even know that they were already working on, um, building the same thing that he just built. So, but at a factory, you know, so they were actually building these as prototypes, uh, or one at least as a prototype, and they got that one together, and they found out about his, so between the two of them having already done it, then, you know, it worked out pretty well. Now, like I said, they only made 87 to, I think, 105 of these, like I said, because the records were, you know, not so great, and really, the main thing this was for was for close-in support. Uh, like Hitler's train had these on them. They had these on um, ships, not the whirlwind, but the gun. The gun's like the main thing. Uh, so they had these like at shipyards and on ships and on trains and all that stuff because these things were easy to mount. You know, and Germany had a lot of very versatile guns and gun mounting. You know, they could mount them on the ground. They could put them on a trailer. They could mount them on a half track. They could put them on a old damaged tank I mean it, they, they were doing a lot they did a lot of smart things uh, with these vehicles they just never got enough of anything and their supply shortage was massive by the end of the war they couldn't really build anything anymore so that's the end of that we'll do another one on this another time talk about some other things with the whirlwind but hope you enjoyed it good luck have fun see you in the next one